You ready? I'm good. Thank All right. You. All right. Uh, I'd like to call the April 16th Windsor Township Planning Commission uh, meeting to order. Um, I have a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes. I'll make that motion. First and a second. All in favor? Uh, approval of the minutes from December 20th, 2024. I'm taking notes. Secretary Farmer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Second. Yeah, I'm second. First and second. All in favor? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, any public comments this, this evening? No one on the side of sheet. No one on the side of sheet? All right, great. Moving on to old business, uh, Mountain Trail Solar LLC, conditional use hearings on 4.30 at 6 p.m. Anything else to report? Mm -hmm. None of this plan. Okay. Uh, Ron's construction, the H&K Group cement plan. That can be report there as well. Uh, and then the Snyder subdivision. Is he building over there already? Or is he building? Yeah. Or no, he's going to? Yeah, he's going to. Once he's even below $2 million? Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, then moving on to new business. South Schuylkill Property Group LLC self storage facility. Special exception results. I'm assuming they got it. I believe I did. I don't yeah. remember if I've seen anything. Okay. I've not seen anything. Okay. But there's nothing pending before you. Yep. So the next step in that process is they come back here for conditional use then, or they've been granted that now? Or what would be the next step? No, no we just plan it on the plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, Station Pass LLC, special exception results. It's a mess. <laughs> that, is, that is an accurate description. <laughs> um, so essentially, they. They realized that they filed the wrong event. And so they actually are going to need to go for conditional use. So they can they continue the variance hearing indefinitely. So there's there's really nothing to report. I don't know the station That's Blue Harry. Blue Harry. Blue Harry. Oh, yeah. What did they file incorrectly? Like this guy's been coming to meetings for like two years. Did he start the process recently wrong or from the beginning? No, no, no. No, no, that they, they they may need a variance, but they also are going to need additional conditional use of rule okay. because he's, try, he's going to be attempting uh, to suggest that he's doing um, a residential con or a, a conversion of the units from a uh, two to a three unit. He's trying to make single family halls into two to three units. Right, which, which, uh, under, the conditional use of which under the ordinance requires a conditional use of rule. Mm -hmm. So I think that they want to do that piece first before they go forward with the variance. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, if there's no other new business. We're going to move on to Planning Commission concerns, and we're going to talk about the solar farm ordinance. Is there anything else that we want to talk about as far as Planning Commission concerns other than the ordinance? There are a tremendous amount of trees hanging over Fort Clinton Avenue. I don't know that we have any bearing on that, but they're like hanging on the wires, which I know this is like an ongoing problem, but I guess it kind of is what it is until it falls in the road, right? That's until until it actually damages something. Damages something. Yeah. Unfortunately. And then usually you have to get your, get the state senator involved. Yep, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, let's get into this thing. Okay, so like I said a moment before the meeting started, what I handed each of you is just physical copies of what was sent out to you uh, in the middle of last week. Um, the first item is uh, a document final specifications to be specified by the Planning Commission, and that would basically be our checklist for handling this final draft out and crossing all the T's. Um, the second item in that was the, you know, basically to be final, um, draft of the ordinance, again with some items to be plugged in based on our discussions this evening. And then the last item was a uh, response letter from the Brooks County Planning Commission dated March 13th, 2024, um, in response to what we submitted to them. Um, and as you know, we had sent um, you know, the draft of the ordinance that we discussed um, you know, at the last meeting. 
and a list of items for them to address, um, a decent amount of which they have in some capacity. So, you know, what I did was on this final specifications document, at the top I just have a definitions um, item to address, and then after that, basically there are a number um, items that correspond to the numbers in the letter that we got back from the, the County Planning Commission. So the idea is we can kind of run down the list and hammer everything out one by one. Love it. Sounds good. Okay. So the first item then on the final specifications is with regards to the current definitions for solar energy systems in our ordinance. Um, there was a concern raised um, in regards to how our current definitions read that it's kind of uh, not ambiguous, but it, uh, it's kind of hard to draw a line between what type of project you fall into, accessory versus commercial, and there's an open question as far as whether like a uh, developer tries to say, oh, well, this is a utility scale, or you know, some type of scale that doesn't otherwise fit into the categories that we have defined in our ordinance. So um, one thing that the County Planning Commission um, had done is they basically distinguish between accessory and commercial energy systems based on the output. Um, so like accessory would have a cap of uh, 10 kilowatts and then commercial has a floor of 10 kilowatts. The idea being whatever sort of solar project that is proposed, whether it's primary uh, purposes for powering something on site or whether it's going for off site, it's gonna fall into either accessory or commercial. Um, and so I think if I remember correctly, one of the distinct distinguishing uh, facts was that you wanted to separate industrial use as well. Isn't that what you mentioned? Kind of the industrial and utility kind of now fall into commercial. That's, well, that's, that, that should be the general sense. Yeah. You just have you residential a, or commercial. Right? Don't need There's no, yeah, I don't it's know. Separated by the, the 10 kilowatts. Yeah. Megawatt. You don't need to get into a, it's residential or it's commercial. Okay. I mean, that's going to be the black and white. I did. I did make a notation that the you know county planning commission had it that there was no cap on the wattage for um, roof mounted arrays, which I thought was kind of interesting because I mean if you have a big enough building, it could be wide as some of the ground mounted ones. So I didn't put that cap in here. That's um, set by building code. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's a there's a building code standard for your adopted that sets that for uh, roof loads. Understood. Okay. Okay. Are there any questions on how we kind of have the proposed um, definitions altered? And again, the, the full language is what, the, is what has been added to reflect the 10 kilowatts for the ceiling. How many kilowatts is the is the proposed 400 acre facility? You don't yeah. see that. Do you know what it is? Not off the top of my head. 10 kilowatts? 10 kilowatts. Yeah, it's That's pretty crazy. <laughs> All right. So the accessory would be either like or res residential yeah. or or. accessory or business. You know, mm -hmm. like the Walmart would put the money for the accessory. Yeah, as as so they're exceed. primarily using it for their own use. Well, and then if they exceed, we have the kilowatt thing here, so they exceed that, but then they have to go to the building code. So then the building board of appeals to approve, and because you need an engineer to sign off that the weight load can hold. What they're trying to do, and then we go to commercial energy system, and we're going to go that way too. Okay. Right? Because we're going by the kilowatts. Yeah. Seems much simpler. Mm -hmm. Seems as easy as one. Sounds good. Okay. okay, so then moving you know, down a bit, like halfway through the page, the next kind of bolded under what item is just items addressed in the Burroughs County uh, Planning Commission Review Letter. Um, you know, so the first item, if you're kind of looking at, you know, final specifications and the parts 13 letter side by side, uh, number one is just regards to suggesting that conditional use permit for solar be used in, you know, all zoning districts. I mean, I don't think there's any where this is just an outright permitted use. I'm pretty sure everyone is already conditionally used. So, yeah, yeah so that's why I have NA under number one, because we don't need to change anything with that. Uh, so number two. Um, the County Planning Commission um, suggested considering a maximum acreage for these projects by percentage of land, not a number, and or a maximum percentage of land area available for clear cutting um, in these types of projects. So as far as like a guidepost to what is reasonable, at least as far as the acreage percentage, there is uh, Porter Township 
Including County, Pennsylvania uses 25% of the total area of the lot for a particular project as its cap. Um, I did not see um, any sort of number basis for the idea of um, clear cutting, um, so it's kind of the first point of discussion. Um, I know one of the items brought up was can we cap these? Well, this other township did, and the County Planning Commission is saying, yeah, you can do it based on a percentage. But the, we, we have that technically in the county district currently. They're, they are capped oh, to a max and impervious percentage. Yeah. And that's basically the same thing, right? 25. 25? The tree cutting thing is intriguing, though. So I've been, I've been noticing because of that lovely state law of timber harvest being permitted everywhere by right, I've been noticing a couple places where they're coming, they need a variance, they decide, no, I'm not going to do anything with the land. They timber harvest it, then they come back and then, you know what I mean? I think I follow you. How would you, how, yeah, I, I don't know, I was just think it's one of those things that just happened in Longsville back I'm just having like a conversation like, that we, can we really put a thing on tree, tree planting? I mean, I've seen some other, you know, townships where they did like a whole sort of tree protection ordinance, and again, there's exceptions out for that, for the type of logging that you're talking about. Yeah. Um, but I just had a, a, an attorney at Long Swamp submit that that's illegal because of the, the state laws, you know, permitting the tree lobbying. But I, 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 I'm for R40, it's all the way to. Are you, are you uh, now there's a distinction between clear cutting versus and managed understand, tree harvesting? I understand, understandable. What, yeah. what I'm saying is you, you still put a percentage of trees that can be removed, right? We put a percentage of trees that can be removed. If they go to timber harvest, can we put a percentage of trees that can be removed, even if they do a timber harvest and come back later and say, oh, I'm just going to do it? You know, I'm, you know what I'm trying to say? Oh, like they, I see what you're saying. They like use they, the first law first, they timber harvest, and then they come back and say, now I want to remove 25% of the Well, we are, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So I just wasn't sure if that, because we have the WAC. You know what I mean? And then that needs that would need to then somehow get transferred on a deed. So say you buy a property, you timber harvest, I buy it, and then I come and want to put solar panels on it, and now I'm going to clear for twenty five percent. So at what point what at what point is that over with? What's the time frame where hey you clear cut the trees and now it's reset? You know, I don't know that, I mean are we getting into, I, I, into the trees? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we might have yeah. 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 saw it. I, I'm just trying to think, and, and, and I have a developer that just did this, so I'm, I'm trying to just kind of put this all out there. That's good. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if we can't. I don't know. I'm actually going to forward them. See you there. All right, moving on to number three, I guess. Sure. So everybody, is everybody okay with number two? Do we need to finish number two? Are you okay at 25%? And that's all we need to know. But not addressing that for any cutting. This doesn't change the impervious numbers that we already have in here. <clears throat> right? Correct. Yeah, correct. Yes, you're correct. Sorry, I'm just for the moment. Let's be sure you're the bottom of the map. So, so item number three, um, the, county, the county planning commission suggested. Um, Basically, provision to provide contact information um, you know, for the owner operator. Uh, so, what I did was I added language into section J1. And you can see that in the solar ordinance draft, uh, the beginning of the bottom of page two. Yeah, yeah, it starts, it's J subparagraph one. Would there be any reason to specify the size of the sign and the half like only because I know like your addresses have to be at least four inches tall or I mean, there's all kinds of requirements. Is that something we should consider or it doesn't matter? Yeah, hurt. Um, makes sense. But does anybody know of the baseline that makes sense for the column line. You what, what did you say? So we do have a sign ordinance. We, we do have a sign ordinance. Yes. So they're, they, they're, we're going to require them to have a sign indicating the name, owner, operator, and phone numbers at the facility. Okay. 
should that sign be a certain size? Well, it should just follow the ordinance. So, so that specifies like how big the sign yeah, is and the letters. So the district that it would be located in, it would specify how big what the letters and those kind of usages. Does that only does that only distinguish how big it can be, or does that distinguish what size it needs to be? Well, so, signs do, yeah, size, height. Um, how big the square footage on the front of the he's talking, he's talking about I'm letters. saying can somebody hide the sign letters, like they don't want the phone calls because they put a business card on the on the sign. Oh, oh you want like a minimum size letter size? Right. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I mean that way they're not calling the township to find out who owns it because they didn't see the sign in the first place. Like you're saying the minimum size for yeah. Uh, I mean four four, four like it seems four, seems big. Four inch letters. Yeah. You know. But if it's fifty feet from the road you know, that it doesn't have to be 50 feet from the road. Probably, probably put it on the sides. Can be in the, yeah, the yeah I have it written to be at the at, at each ingress and egress point. For yeah, the so it should be right there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, how big do you think would <coughs> be appropriate? I mean, I'm just, I'm just, just trying to, to I'm just trying to alleviate. The no, no, it's too it's small. A good, it's a good. So I think that I mean two or three inch minimum per letter. I think is probably. Three yeah. inch, three yeah. inch, probably. Yeah. It's too big. It gets. Yeah. Ugly. You don't want it to be obnoxious, but at the same time, you want to be able to see it from the road if it's mounted to the fence that's, you know, set back pretty far from the road. <coughs> Is everybody else okay with that? So the text, uh, yeah, the text is like I'm thinking of the proposed language that I'll throw in here. Yeah. It's kind of like the end sentence. Whatever you put there will be more legal than anything we can come up with. So that's yeah. So <laughs> just can you give me the measurement again? I'm sorry. Just Three inch tall three letters, three. I think, okay. would be. Yeah, they do it. Three inch tall by <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to um, well, numbers four and five, I kind of grouped together, and um, on the final specifications, I have three in parentheses there. I don't know why, but it's supposed to be P as in Paul. <laughs> but uh, I added language to cover four and five in letter P of the ordinance, and basically over the comments from the county, what what did county planning commission? Uh, pertain to um, basically coordination with emergency services. And I know in the previous um, you know, draft that we had for this, we already had some language in there, so I just beefed it up to account for what the county plan commission suggested. Are you talking about the agency access requirements? Uh, that is also in that same subsection. Uh, I that? kept it fairly general. I know they had made it um, 20 feet cartways between panels. I had it that the site plan is shown include means of access to all areas of the commercial solar energy system, which is satisfactory to local emergency service providers. Yeah, so we get a fire review anyway. So if that's, he says, yeah, yeah. So if he says it needs to be twenty feet, it's twenty feet. Sure. Yeah. 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 Did we ever come up with? Um, do we know if there's anything specifically required for a battery type fire? And then they would need to provide the fire companies with that apparatus. Um, that yet? I mean, we didn't come up with anything specific for that to be put in here, but that's something that you can propose as a condition once they go through conditional use, um, based on what their submission is, what kind of battery storage they're working with. Right. I imagine that will determine what, you know, the, the, whatever fire company would be responsible right. for handling that. They would be kind of saying, look, this is the type of. Um, Methods that we need to use to do this, and we, you know, a condition can be imposed and say, Look, you know, our fire company reviewed what you're looking to do. This is right. how they say this is best to address it. So, as a condition, we need to do X, Y, and Z to meet that plan. Okay. You just see those Teslas burning in the middle of the road, and the firefighter can't put them out. You know, that's probably a problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Any other suggestions on four and five? Okay. Okay, so then moving on to, and again, I grouped numbers six and seven together just because they both pertain to screening. And the relevant section in the draft would be uh, paragraph U. YouTube. Oh, YouTube, that's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, the, yeah, there's a base U and U2. U2 is pertaining to uh, just, I added in a little uh, sentence on the end there, just that the maintenance agreement pertaining to screening is going to include provisions for replacement of any debt screening. That's a pretty cut and dry. Um, but then a kind of overall question for just the base U are we okay with the parameters that were set in the draft for the screening as far as? Um, like the 50 feet, um, the everything trees that you know, solid level um, grow, um, or the urban beam as like urban firm as the uh, alternate. I think those were kind of discussed before, but I, I genuinely couldn't remember for sure. So I thought, well, let's just make sure the requirement of those assets. I think as long as you're getting the height in there, as long as you're getting the height, that's it. You know, it means we could block the residents that live there and their view straight from. We're not putting shrubs that are one foot tall, like in Richmond, they have one foot shrubs. I agree with the eight feet tall trees, or at least some barn big enough to block the view. And we'll be replacing that with the Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty solid. What's the, what would this reason, what do you consider this? What is reasonable for them to replace the trees? Like, how long can they be there that you have to? With, you know, it's eight foot trees that they've dead. Like, do you get after them as far as not moving conditions as? Well, yeah, I mean, if I saw enough dead trees, right. I'd run that. That's how it would be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving on to the next page, number eight. This is something that hadn't been touched at all. Um, and I'm not even sure if I'm going to pronounce this word correctly. <laughs> Agrivoltics. Basically, um, it's a term of art referring to when you have a solar panel facility and you're allowing like an agricultural use kind of um, coexisting with it based on, you know, there's, I guess, there's different types of livestock that can um, graze um, amongst the panels and, and whatnot. Same with like different types of plants that can thrive in that sort of you know kind of shaded or partially shaded environment. So I don't think that was ever brought up as being something that we were going to specifically write into there or not. Um, so it's kind of the old the discussion is you know are we going to you know put something in there specifically allowing it or disallowing it, and if we're going to allow it, are there any types of uh, you know limits as to those types of activities that we would have in commercial solar projects? Um, You'll see I have a, a couple of paragraphs of language um, below, and this is uh, like below number three on the page uh, under this number eight. Um, first one is from one per county, Pennsylvania. The second one is from the County Planning Commission. And then the last one that begins with vegetarian areas is uh, also from Ontario County. If we don't have anything in the vessel, what happens if something has to be great sheep underneath the How is that regulated? Or how is that? I wouldn't do that. It would just be like a, a farmer in this field. Yeah. Open that. I mean, I've seen it. I've seen it done. It's not really a problem. So how would it need to be in the farm this thing? I mean, I guess what, what, from a farmer's perspective, what downside is there? In what in, in having me there, like, is there any type of animal that you think would not be a good fit underneath solar panels? Uh, the, 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 the downside would be the size of animal, like uh, just destroying the ground and becoming a mud pit. No, no, no I think damaging the panels. the panels themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and for and, what, and sheep, that's why they go to sheep rather than goats. Goats, you know, mm -hmm. they go stand on. You know, sheep don't. Uh, I, I've seen numerous articles, you know, the last couple of years that this, this is a developing thing, you know, right now. Yeah, for what it's To worth. try to maintain ag land and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, 
anywhere from their experimenting with animals, for one thing. Uh, if you want to do larger animals, the height then of the, the arrays would be adjusted so that it would be a problem. They're also um, and then they're experimenting too with grasses grow best, you know, and therefore grazing grows. You know, so. Another thing I just came across the other, the other week too is, you know, maybe planting agricultural, as they refer to it here, you know, some agricultural crops. Since you do have a 20 foot, you know, or whatever at the minimum, and most likely if you do that, they'd spread it down as far as apart to accommodate. But that's, I think that's just an experimental stage and what, what's working. You know, from my perspective, the farmer, you know, it's allowable right now, you know, and, and it's, I think it's worthy of pursuit, you know, whether you have to regulate that. I don't, yeah, I I mean, don't necessarily see a downside to it. Yeah, I mean, and it, it you know, very well may more so be a, you know, a creature of a creature, you know, of new origin sort of thing. Um, you know, from the, plant, the Berks County Planning Commission's kind of default, you know, language, it seems like they were incentivizing this type of agricultural activity um, to basically say, okay, you know, maybe normally you can only use, you can only go to your project provided this type of soil on there, it's like, you know, the different classes and whatnot, but if you do these agricultural activities, we'll let you get away with a little bit more because you're having an agricultural use which is going to preserve some of the better soil. At, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not saying that, you know, um, just necessarily, you know, should you know go in there right now? It may be something that we want to just kind of keep in the back of our minds if we ever want to add it at a later time once more has been seen on it. But I felt I mean, I personally think that would be cool to have that. I mean, the property is then still being used for agricultural use in addition to the soil panels. I was thinking about that too. However, and in the what farmer is going? To, well, what business is going to? Probably not. In other words, if it's required. And what farmer are you going to get that saying he's going to guarantee he's going to be there for X number of years? I don't know because he don't know whether it's going to be profitable or not. Yeah, I don't you think know, that. I don't think so. we're saying that would be a requirement. Okay. It's just putting stipulations in in the event that they did do it, like what animals that are they allowed to put in there? But in the event that they put cows in, Agri in agricultural, land. yeah, yeah. agricultural. Well, and if they do, then we, they have to fix them based on the rest of the world. Yeah, I just feel like this will happen that it's going to be I just feel like this is something that needs to be. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's the that's the solar company's yeah, liability, you know. Yeah. And yeah, that's all in yeah. you know. Um, they probably could revisit and you know, yeah. so think about it more. Yeah. yeah so we can this, this was mentioned, I thought, like six months ago by one of the solar projects that's about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 they were. It did come yeah, up in conversation. Like, because it was such a small, yeah, there was a small community solar farm. They used to use sheep in cemeteries for that reason. That's why the walls were around cemeteries with the little gate, because the sheep mm -hmm. would go in there and eat around the gravestone so they wouldn't have to mow the grass. Learning mm -hmm. something new, Planning Commission. Actually, some people, <laughs> some people were making their living all right. the sheep from one solar plot to the next. Yeah. And we're starting our uh, solar farm sheep business. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will move on from that then. Number nine. Number nine. Uh, this is just in regard to stormwater, which again, I think that hopefully would be handled in the development phase anyway, if I'm correct on that. But for what it's worth, I just added a provision to uh, paragraph W3. Um, you were just noting that. You know, that that would be you know, complied with and that you know the uh, techniques and measures that they plan to use throughout the different phases of construction would be um, you know shown. Yeah, that's good. That's good because I'm getting tired of hearing the frame out the thing saying that they were required to provide a stormwater plan and they didn't want to get into the heart. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, prohibition of advertising on any equipment associated with the system. Um, this I just added into paragraph J. Yeah, that's what you have here. 
Because you know, once they realize they can make money, they just cut down the time. Oh, yeah, the big billboards and all the fences and everything. Oh, uh, yeah. It just will. Yep, it's good. Mm -hmm. Panels of flash or something. <laughs> And, uh, number 11, this is kind of an open one. It pertains to paragraph W5 uh, with regards to uh, the provision that we have um, for keeping soil stored on site. Um, and the, planning, the, the county planning commission had said um, about trying to propose some sort of feasible, feasible alternate procedure in the event that some project would not have the practical ability to keep all the soil that they would do on site that you could put in. Um, I mean, I suppose an alternate could just be if you can't, you know, it's demonstrated by the applicant that storing all of the soil on site is, you know, impractical or infeasible, um, you know, satisfactory proof of it being stored off site, you know, in a manner that's, you know. Are you still going to make them store it for 30 years? I mean, Really, at that point, I don't think it really matters. If it's not feasible to keep it on the property, I think they just go with it. That would be my. I feel like the size of the, the project versus the size of the land. It should, it should be feasible. Right. It should it always should be feasible. Work. Yeah. So, is that something that you disallow? And move the soil off site? I mean, but it's only if it's not feasible, so and that's going to be up to us if it's feasible or not. So it would, it's going to be a business commission view, so, yeah. so I think there would be. I mean, if they can only do 25% coverage, yeah, there's, then, a lot there's so many other places they can put the soil on the property. Yeah. Yeah, the grounds could be for the soil. So, I mean, I guess, considering so do we need to put in there in the event that it's not, they can, I mean, dispose of the soil, or do we just leave it all together because it's unreasonable probably under any circumstance? I mean, at that point, we'll just need to give them the variance. Well, uh, so this this would be a conditional use. I think you could probably put language that just says that, that this this requirement can be waived upon the upon the proper show of the board of supervisors. Because the, the board essentially is sitting as the zoning board in yeah. that situation. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, so that's why it's a, like and like somebody said, like practically speaking, it probably won't yeah. happen, but right. the money is for something out of that. So Basically, the county planning commission was just saying that, hey, um, the county conservation district requires this pre-application meeting for projects that are, uh, you know, brought up in the in the area of the district. So I just added um, a one that any proposed uh, commercial solar energy system would coordinate with them, um, follow, you know, proceed with their uh, pre-app meeting and comply with whatever procedures that they promulgate. Mm -hmm. When would that happen, like, in, in the land development phase, or? Uh, the pre-construction meeting happens right after they get approval, and then the, the conservation district, they get their approval, then they would have a meeting before they got any permits. Before mm -hmm. the permit. Mm -hmm. They have a meeting before they get permits, right? That's good. Okay. Moving on to other final items. Yeah, so these are kind of the more open items that weren't specifically addressed in any way by the County Planning Commission, but for purposes of ironing out our ordinance should be addressed in some way. So the first item, you know, I'll be fine with the CPI and annual basis for uh, the reference to the decommission that's uh, specified in paragraph 01. And how we had it last. Uh, Page three near the bottom. Basically, um, the requirement is that an independent certified professional engineer um, is retained by the township but paid for by the applicant to estimate the total cost cost of decommissioning um, and to have a like admin inflation factor of either five percent, you know, per annum or um, the CPI of the Mid Atlantic Northeast region, whichever is greater. Is 
it's hard to put it, I think it's hard to put a pin on that, but it kind of covers us in both ends. Got the good way of working hyper and put play tuning and CPI if you reflect that. So. Yeah, and, and so you having it be a readjustment. I'm not wishing that on us, I'm just saying, like, I, I, I'm, just sort of, as well. I'm just sort of reacting to the fact that aren't being in a hyper inflation. That's true. It's sort of. It's sort of much worse. I mean, it's not the 70s, but it's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I think too, I mean, that's sort of concern is why we have that, you know, it would be on an annual basis that it gets recalculated and based on the recalculation, the applicant, um, you know, would put forward additional security to cover that just so that the capture is covered throughout the process. And that's good. The only thing I'm going to point out is that who, whose obligation is it to recalculate this? Because I'm going to tell you just on a, an administrative level, I don't think that the town, you know, the township is not going to do this, and you know, and if you, if you leave it up to them, how well is well, going well, to be No, I'm just, I'm just saying that, like, that this is something that the board, you know, and I'll bring this up to the board as well. That this needs to get on someone's radar, you know, and I don't know if it becomes a zoning officer or um, who's <laughs> the secretary. <laughs> <laughs> Secretary, you know, it just from an administrative perspective, I think it needs to be addressed. That because it should be the township who's following up on this. Yeah, just worry that because we don't, you know, we one thing we're if we had staff like like the borough of Hamburg, I wouldn't worry right. about it. But with essentially part time staff, it's, it's the exception of the roadmaster. I worry that it won't get done. Yeah. Good point. I just think I just think, amounts of past, but right. I just think we need to make sure that administratively that it's someone's job, not everyone's job. So mm -hmm. we actually get some. I mean, so worst case scenario, this falls under the radar for five years. You can still go back and say the CPI was X four or five percent and then just compound. compound it that five years and now you're caught up. I mean at that point you could. I mean, that, and that's like worst case scenario. Yeah. And then the update was According to it. You're saying it should be a simple job description. It should, I just, I, I, I see this, I see this happen with, um, with letters of credit. Is that, you know, every, those read that every five years, you know, mm -hmm. and usually it happens or, you know, because some because something else happened, not because someone is being proactive about it. Right. And I'm just I'm just with this being an annual requirement, I'm I'm just worried that the township is not doesn't really have a system in place or the manpower in place to to monitor this. Does it I mean does the bond work kind of like I mean it's kind of like an insurance policy, right? Is it similar? Letter of credit? Yeah, it's similar. I mean, just because they would, I mean, I would assume that the, the person issuing the bond would then be sending us a copy of that every year? Not exactly. No. What I'm trying to liken it to like renter's insurance or something where I'm notified because I'm kind of a beneficiary of them having the insurance. So the letter, they give us the original letter of credit and put it, you know, but they don't necessarily, the bank doesn't necessarily reach okay. out to, to say, hey, you can update this. Okay. It just sort of sits there. So it's not a stretch to have the secretary of the township assigned to the annual. Right, project. I just want to make sure it, okay. you know, it's one thing when you have one project, but if you have three, four, five, six, or seven, in the township, not always yeah. in one right, it's just something that yeah. I, I think it, it's an administrative issue that needs to be addressed with the supervisors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So moving on um, to letter O, subparagraph three, on the middle of page four, um, with regards to getting insurance uh, for general liability coverage um, that arises during the construction and operation of decommissioning of the 
uh, commercial solar energy system. I mean, we met, you know, the bond is just for the decommissioning. Um, I think that's pretty low. Yeah. That was the point, is that yeah. we, we think a million is not enough. No, it's not mm -hmm. But we don't know what the number is. <laughs> Five. I mean, I'd be much happier with five. I think five yeah. is probably five is a good place. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we used to make commercial tenants get three million dollars in liability coverage. Just in a little storefront. I think that's, that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think, I, I think 10 is too much. Yeah, they're not building the building down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, in W1, um, there was, you know, one, at some point along the way, um, there was an idea of providing for um, you know, water testing just um, to head against any potential um, contaminants of that. Um, the closest I, you know, found for a type of ordinance that we was pertained to that um, was from some bureau. Um, they had an ordinance requiring water testing every three months, but it was pertaining to like a junkyard. Uh, so it's a little bit different than something like this. Um, I, I would think that that sort of interval is probably too often for this type of use. Um, Greater junkyard where you have cars and potential oil and stuff leaking out of them into the ground. And I get the concern is with depending on the type of panel that something like that can happen. But um, I'm thinking, you know, that some sort of uh, wider interval would be appropriate. Um, and you're talking about after construction? Uh, I think we have it as, yeah, during the whole construction existence and decommission that more of a testing would go on. I suppose, you know, it should probably. Like the operation, you think there's less. I guess I, I, I personally see the construction and decommissioning as more volatile events compared right. to it just existing. So maybe yeah. the interval could be quicker then and, uh, you know, wider during its existence. Um, as far as specific, you know, Unless time. Unless there was like a, an incident, like you know, the panels, maybe it's the first time or something, but you have to check if it's different. I mean, I suppose you could you could make, create a requirement that if there's an incident, if there's some sort of incident, yeah, you know, there's a fire, if there's you know, break, you know breakage of the panels, that at that point they would have to do some water testing just to make sure that there's no leaching into the soil. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's probably more appropriate than an interval sort of thing. But that's what makes sense. I mean, if we can break it up that during construction and decommissioning, it's every three months, and then during existence, it's annually, I think that would be sufficient. And then if you can put a parameter in there that in the event there is an extenuating circumstance, you know, the borough, the borough within, or the borough, the township within reason can request additional testing to be completed, um, not to exceed every three months, maybe? I don't know. Is that, is that reasonable? I think so. Yeah. I had a question. Are you requiring uh, pre-testing, like before they start the project? It would make sense for like a control. Just so like you I know what you're starting would, with. Yeah, no, for okay. sure. That would make sense. They probably would do it in their own self-interest. Are you making a drill to a certain depth? Uh, are you, are you make, what, what, what exactly are you going to do? On any on? stream located on the premises or any stream within five so hours. So surface say. water? Yeah. Just testing surface water? That's what this is saying, stating. Okay. What's the, nature, what's the name of the chemical? Something telluride. Cadmium telluride. So that I mean I think that in a lot of cases that's what you're testing for. Um, yeah, but just you know, making sure we're, we're talking about surface water or are we talking about mold water? Surface water. Okay, just on specific because there's when I do water testing for I do junkyards and other things of that nature. You you're, you got to be specific where you're sending that to. There's a group that'll do the surface water testing. There's a group that'll do it. And that's the ones on set from the DEP. Yeah. I mean, should you, we should probably specify that and then specify that if, if what's being tested. Service water runoff. Service water. Well, what, what are you testing it for? Yeah. You got to just what you You can't just say I'm going to test this because it's going to come back with bacteria and all this and everything of that nature. You right. got to be specific with what you are. Just like when I have every well ordinance, it specifically states. 
Um, was it pro form? So this says or that this says it specifically states what you have to test a well for an its core. So this says Diesel shall one. this says shall conduct water testing every three months on any stream located on the premises or any stream within five hundred feet of the site. Test samples should be required upstream and downstream of the site so that the impact of construction, existence, and decommissioning of a commercial solar energy system can be determined. The sample shall be analyzed by a certified water analysis laboratory for hydrocarbons or other parameters deemed appropriate by the township and shall be prov provided to the township. With, if set examples exceed the limits established by the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection, commercial solar energy system shall cease operation until such time as the source of the contamination has been identified and corrected in accord with the DEP requirements. Is cadmium telluride a hydrocarbon? No. Looking at the, looking at the chemical engineer. No, it's not. So then maybe we want to specify that as something being tested for in addition. Well, specifically, you want to specify yeah. because I get into the magistrate or anything of that nature, he's going to say, what are you specifically looking for? Right. It's the same thing when I do wells with something. Yeah. Wells come back with, I mean, everything under the sun. Yeah, I know. And then people shouldn't be drinking out of them, but as long as it doesn't have this certain thing, it, it, it is what it is. Well, the construction and decommissioning, are we only worried about the stuff coming out of the solar panels, or are you then worried about whatever you're uprooting out of the soil? I mean, at that point. Yeah, but I mean, you can't really. I mean, at that same point, okay, so every single place that you dig or right. you cultivate or whatever, you're going to, no, that right. doesn't make sense. Okay. So yeah. I think it's just specific. So then does it make sense to make a, a closer interval at the beginning and at the end? I mean, because during the construction phase, why would you have any more than you would have when it's already functioning? Yes, they're doing construction, but they're not smashing panels all over the place. I mean, that's. So, so just make it annual. Makes it less complicated. I yeah. would make it sure. annual. Just make it annual, and then I mean, in the event of an extenuating circumstance, however you put that legally, <laughs> it can be requested to be done every three months. Other than the hydrocarbons in the cadmium telluride, is there anything else that we would think would be leaching from these to be testing for? The only thing that I would suggest, and I don't know what standard testing would involve, but the kind of elements you might be looking for would be cadmium, lead, copper, or aluminum. I would think those four would be the ones you'd be concerned about. But I don't know what's realistic for what, when they do testing like this with water. We have to make sure that we're allowing the DEP standard for lead in the water, you know, ground wise, albeit or whatever, copper, what's the percentage, you know what I mean? And that, just would like be, how that would be the last part of that paragraph, which is said samples exceed the limits established by right. DEP. That's so that's perfect. Yeah, see, just because it's positive for lead doesn't mean it's a problem. Yeah, exactly. So do we want to add something in here about a control? Like, do they have to do water testing beforehand? Well, there, if there's when a they start making the, you're, you're taking some upstream yeah. and downstream. So that the upstream would be the control. But before the project starts, though, so that you know what the, what the water but either either way, the upstream is still upstream would be a control. control. Yeah, that, that provides you yeah. the control okay. at the relevant upstream of the project point. So is everybody okay with an annual water testing? Mm -hmm. You can request more if there's a problem. Everybody else thinks the year is good. The year's good. Yeah. Are they paying for it? Yeah. <laughs> Yes. I was just going to say, just make sure we're following the hook. This is going to be a full time job for you. I'm just saying, so, like, tell I did all the stuff they have to do every year. I've done this for 15 years. I had solar panels through and through from the solar pump. They'll come and put them in and come back. Yeah, I'm, this, this I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, none of this is going to. I'll be chasing these guys forever. It'll change five company names before I. I'm just saying. I'm just being real. I, 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 I get it. And I'm being honest. You, you would know. I, 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 what, what can you my first time in Minnesota. 
You, you get them. You chase them. It's all. He just goes over and cuts the wires. <laughs> <laughs> right out. I start pulling wires from the panels. I plug my, my house in. <laughs> as far as the water, is there going to be any problem with file driving all the pylons in? That it could turn the, the well water cloudy? Did that change the, the water? That seemed to happen at some places. They, they knocked so many of them in <laughs> that it changed the direction of the water flowing into the wells that it messed up the wells. And they so that's just a pressure. They do it with decks around here too, but they use the diamond piers. Yeah, but I don't think they do as many as you're doing in these projects. I think that's the problem. How would that change the well? How did it, what did it work? From, from all that, you're putting one here, putting one here, and you're doing that for but it's only three months straight. It's only three feet in depth. So yeah. how? Oh, I, I, I think it will affect it. You're thinking like it changes direction. I think it changes the direction of your underground water. Well, I think the, the landowners should have some new way there to do something. I don't know what. Because it affects you well. At, at that point, I would want a hydrologist to tell us that three feet of that of pressure pier drilling is affecting underground water. Mm -hmm. If that's what you're saying, because I've well, never- I'm not so sure now how to believe it, but that isn't some okay. of the problem that happened there now. I went to find- and, and I don't know what it is, I can't prove that, I'm just saying. <coughs> I was at a lot of those meetings because right near my house. Yeah. And I can tell you right now, all their water problems is because one, they have the worst engineering firm in the entire country, craft code. And I can stand by that <laughs> because the country, they messed up the they messed up the development behind my house so bad that it just run, it flooded a whole row of houses out. Um, long story short, that whole stormwater facility, everything is wrong. They didn't follow the plan at all. And, and who Kraft was, never Glenn Kraft never showed up to any of those inspections. Well, who's the fault there? The township? No, it's Kraft Co. Which Absolutely. Is so are they going back and suing yeah. or has that? I don't know how it works. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry, but to me, that's who I'm mad at. But I can just tell you that's where the, that's where they're getting the water problems. They're getting the water problems because <coughs> sorry, <coughs> it's allergies. Yeah, and they move way too much ground out there. <coughs> but they moved ground so quickly that they didn't establish any of the water. Nothing got put underground. Nothing got established through water. They moved so quickly, they never did the inspections. They just said, here, here, here. They did it so quickly. They did it on purpose that way. That's why they planted one foot trees. Trust me, I have a big thing about this. I'm taking to the state, but well, I'm being my state representative. Yeah. Does the African actually said they're going to only drill three feet down? That, that's, that's a, the three feet's all that's required by state code. Okay. Building code is three feet. That's all they're allowed to. Okay. If it was going to be engineered, if it was higher, it would be engineering, but the three feet would still be the building for the Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. And I missed one other thing. When you start with the de decommissioning cost, how do you establish the cost up front? Uh, the township selects a... Um, a I missed that. Go ahead. Yeah, township selects an engineer. I will get pays for them to establish the um, estimate of the decommissioning cost. We basically hire an appraiser that comes out and says, this is how much it's going to cost today to take it down. The township does that, not him. The township selects Select. the person, okay. Okay. they pay for it. All right, that sounds... Yeah, and then, and then, it, goes, then it goes up by a percentage every year. Yeah, yeah, that I heard. Yeah. All right, I mean, I'm good with annual <laughs> surface water for now. Okay. And then, I mean, obviously, if there's a problem that's created from this, we're going to do what we can to go after it. We'll make sure to go after the engineering firm or something. Yeah, right. It'll be <laughs> That's not me. That's <laughs> just <laughs> design. Okay, the next item, um, considering we're not doing, like, we're not going to add anything to our computer cutting, I know one thing we brought up with regards to treatment vegetation. Um, I think it kind of falls into the same category of yeah. uh, it's not something we need to throw in. So. It's part of the 25%? So, it, yeah. yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, that's really the, the good thing. 
So this next one um, is with regards to if any hard hit results from um, uh, construction um, as far as them altering or bringing back um, subsoil that has adequate water filtration. Um, I have included some language on this, but if thinking about it more, um, considering if we're going to be we're already going to be requiring that they provide us plans showing that, hey, they're in the phases of construction. This is how storm water is going to be managed. I don't really know that this, I think this language is kind of uh, redundant. You know, keeping that in mind. I agree with this section. All right, to so pull it out. Right, you mean, you Brian, mean, take it out? Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I, I don't know why. I think I think when originally talked about, I think at first I saw this something distinguishable, but in thinking more about it now, and we appreciate your overthinking. Yeah, and, you know, and I appreciate it. Don't, don't let the smoke waft over to Russell's office. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> so don't let the smoke waft over to Russell's no. office. <laughs> no, this, is, this has been a team effort. Uh, okay. Um, the next item was with regards to um, acquiring a bond, particularly to roads that will be impacted by truck traffic, particularly because of hauling in the materials. Um, the closest thing I've found, um, the Berks County um, Planning Commission had reference um, an ordinance for Montour County, um, and in there I have some language quoted from there, in pertinent part in bold, basically just saying that um, you know they impose like some road bonding requirements. So that leads me to believe that we could have yeah. such a requirement in this. I don't know that there's some other section of our overall ordinance that allows us to do them, or if it's something that we actually have to specify for this particular use. We do. Yeah, we have to sell it. Yeah, we do have a bonding requirement. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, we just add this language, it'll transition to that part of the ordinance. Yeah. Yeah. To, okay. meet, to meet the road bonding requirements of the township. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I can just throw that in under like. You know, make it a subparagraph to um, almost hundreds of thousands of percent. Yeah, I'll I'll read through it tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, and also you know, put on the positive. Okay. Because we talked about that with um, our other project. Oh. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, yeah. They're bringing the manufacturing homes in. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not happy. It's so bad. Mm -hmm. Try not to touch my <laughs> itch if I rub them once. I'm no, I'm going to be itching the rest of the night. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so the next one uh, requirement that battery storage facilities be located at the center of the property. I couldn't find anything on this at all, um, and I hadn't. Uh, the kind of language did not you know, apply onto it one way or the other. Um, I have some proposed language. Um, which, I mean, depending on the size of the site, um, uh, you know, I mean, one, I mean, I guess I, I have two different, you know, potential provisions. I mean, one is just saying that it's situated at a point which is, you know, furthest from all property lines. Again, that that's kind of, you know, broad. It's, you know, um, and I don't think necessarily a project that's going to be guaranteed that they can get it dead center away from all the surrounding property lines of a given parcel. Um, I mean, another thing could just be like we have some sort of modified setback, because I know there's already going to be you know, setback requirements for the project overall. Perhaps just increasing that setback makes sense. Any ordinance I've ever worked with for that particular thing gives a set standard fee from the property line. Oh, okay. So they, they're saying that cell storage facility should be you know, a lot of them do 150, 200 feet from the property line, and they say it should also be about 30 to 40 feet from any other structure in case of fire. Okay. <clears throat> the code minimum is 10, but I I don't agree with that. I I'd say like 30 to 40 feet from any other structure because once those things light up, it's 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 no story. I mean, we can make it 500 feet away from the property line can't. and 50 feet from the structure, and if they can't comply with that, then we can potentially give them relief, right? To, is this for accessory also? No. That's, this, this, this would only have This is only for com the, the, commercial the big commercial storage cells. Because mm -hmm. a lot of those storage cells for accessory are just little, they're put right in the garage. And that's allowed by the and key and 
the national trail. So is 500 feet off the property line and 50 feet from any other structure sufficient? It's up to you. You, you, you can choose. I think you can pretty much choose it as long as it's reasonable. <clears throat> I mean, that's like a football field and a half away. But you think about it, most of the time those are going to be up the driveway. They're most of the time they're up the driveway in the middle where they put the utilities. Yeah. So they'll have the utilities and they'll have the storage here. It's, they're, they're right there. So they're usually pretty far. So you have a 500 foot for many residential. Yeah. So yeah, 500 feet. It's already. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. right. And then last one, which is a wild part. Again, I could not find anything specific on this. It pertains to language in letter N. Um, and the question is, is there any sort of um, industry standard um, to which um, heat load on neighboring properties can be measured? I couldn't find anything saying a type of test. What do you mean? On a genuine... I just know it was brought up at some point. If the sun is glaring off of a panel and it's producing more heat on property because of it, I mean, it's, it's going to be impossible to enforce that. I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. I've actually, I mean, the, you'll, you'll get, so, more, you get more heat load off of another roof. I mean, unless Ryan is. So is this is section N only for heat load, load or is it for glare and heat load? It was a section that originally yeah. existed for the purpose of uh, avoiding direct concentrated solar radiation and glare on the adjacent property by the way. Um, that's, that's what is currently in the ordinance. Is there anything else in the ordinance about glare outside of that one? Uh, During the original meetings, there was a bus driver that had said coming down Sunday Road. You know, if the solar panels were reflecting the light and they were blinding a bus driver coming down. So I think I think glare studies were required. In the glare, solar glare studies are required to the ordinance now. Yeah. yeah. You need you need okay. full glare. You can't glare onto another property. Yeah. That's that's a public nuisance violation. So, so I mean if they're not glaring, they're probably not putting any heat on the property. No. Yeah. No. Okay. Then I'm just gonna remove all the language from letter yeah. Glare is the glare glare glare. Yeah. We have that now for the solar company that's coming through. And plus it's considered a public nuisance. Mm -hmm. But if that is <coughs> the list. You were talking about a top end to a minimum the Is that something you can do? Like a high end, do the amount of um, the size of the project? I think that's the manual hours. I, they didn't opine on that at all, and my take on it was their response in regards to setting the maximum amount of you know um, acreage to be used for a project was their way of saying this is how you restrict size. You don't restrict by output. You know, as far as prohibiting, you know, um, one that produces so much power, but you can say, look, you know, this is the biggest this project can be on a parcel. Yeah. And that, that reminds me, there was one thing I didn't address in this a while back. It was brought up um, the whole idea of our definition of lot and whatnot yes. um, in the township. Um, one thing um, that we could consider doing is uh, we could add one sentence to the definition of lot in the ordinance just to say two pieces of land of which, oh, sorry, yeah, two pieces of land which above each other and have their own separate tax parcel ID numbers, even if under common ownership, shall not be considered one lot and shall instead be considered two separate lots. I mean, that's my understanding of how it's. it's it is. You, oh, be, I agree with you. I that's think how I'm I on the merits. It. The only other way that around that would be to <coughs> actually own both properties <coughs> and go through like consolidation, consolid consolidating them, and then they are one. <coughs> For the 15 years of doing zoning by the time of person. If someone had two pieces of property here and here, and there's a line that splits it, they had a house here, they're not putting an accessory structure over here, unless this, that, you know, for the principal structure, unless that lot that's congruent. Yeah. That's the way I've enforced it for 15 years. I've never. But maybe adding something isn't something. No, we can. We can. And okay. You can always go down and double down on it. I'm just saying, I always enforce it that way until I'm challenged. I've never had a judge that hasn't stood next to me. Yeah. 
I think we should add to the ordinance. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The more firepower you have, the better. Well, I think that that's just clarity for definition for anybody. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's the more firepower. Yeah. If you can make it as clear as possible, there's no, oh, what is your interpretation? Right. What's your interpretation? You know what I mean? So I think the answer is there is no way to limit the size of the facility other than the amount of size of the property and then how yeah. much impervious coverage and or stripping they can do. That's why you have two. Which is what Russell's Russell's assumption was from the beginning, is that putting a limit on it is going to be considered too restrictive. Yeah. Hence why you have two million square foot warehousing. Right. Because you can't limit the size of the building, but you can limit the size of the parcel. Size of what, what they use in the parcel. Yeah. yeah. Those are all the items. So do we need to make a motion to accept the ordinance? So you do need a motion. Uh, we need a motion to recommend to the supervisors approval of this order ordinance with the changes that he's going to make with the modifications as discussed in accordance with the Colorado Burton First County Planning Commission dated 315 24. So what Russell said. Do I have a first and second? How would you do a detail? That's why I wrote it down. So. <laughs> that way I have it for the minute, right? Yeah, I still have a question, and you might have covered it again that I missed it. I'm not that sure. Hey, turn that hearing aid up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, the access road coming in and out. For the fire company, I thought they wanted a certain size road and a certain surface. I know in other townships they do that. Is that here? I missed that. Yeah, in a broad sense. Basically, we have a provision in here that says that, you know, on their plans, they will coordinate with emergency personnel, um, you know, for access points. But those are addressed in their satisfaction. And so based, on, on, the road based on the review, Bruce, based on the fire marshal's review, he will determine what type of surface he requires and what type of width he requires for his apparatus that is needed for that, that facility. Okay. And that will be a condition that we will put in when we do condition use. Okay, so it's not in this, but we're going to that. What is it in this? It's we have it in here. It's okay. in, it's in See, here. I missed it. It's in here, but it's not, it's, it's not specific because every project is different. You want to give the emergency okay. services the ability to say, for this project, this is what we need. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm just you don't have to. No, that's okay. Yeah. Well, it's fine. He listens better at home, I apologize. No. You know better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so do we have a first and a second? I'll second. All right, first and a second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. So three to five is a, is a go, right? So, pajama. So three out of three out of the five. Two yeah. <laughs> two last yeah. 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 Okay, great. I work at Lynn now. Like great four. job, Justin. Yeah. It's been uh, like six months of arduous back and forth. I appreciate your patience on all this. You know, it's something that I think we all want to get, you know, ironed out as you know, officially as possible. But and now that Windsor Township has paid for it, all the other townships in the area can adopt it. <laughs> Yeah, you have a legacy. That's usually what happens. <laughs> yeah. I'll steal this a couple of times. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Usually what happens. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else on the agenda that we need to discuss? There was a concern about the website, which we will talk to Greg about, uh, stating that this meeting was on the 19th, which is clearly not all year today. So uh, we apologize for that. We'll make a note, and I mean, we're gonna try to do better, but the website has been a problem. Um, so I'll make well, a just to clarify that, my father-in-law only yeah. posts whatever Craig says, whatever he is told. Yeah, that's all he does. I think the miscommunication was we were originally gonna have a meeting to go over this on March nineteenth because we were hoping to adopt it sooner, and I think they put April instead of March. That, that's what I'm assuming happened. Uh, not making excuses, I'm just that's what may have happened, so I apologize. Uh, and plus, he's only doing it to help, right? He's retired, he's just <laughs> helping. 
But he only does what he's told. Are you next in line to do that then? No, I will not touch <laughs> the, the, I, do, I, I do enough with zoning and building and all this crap. All right, well then uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. A first and a second. And a third and a fourth. Yeah. All right. Thank you all for coming out. Appreciate it.